Welcome to the solemn Yu-Gi-Oh! channel where we discuss everything collecting and investing in Yu-Gi-Oh! Today, the PWCC auction block ended and so of course we need to check out these new auctions. Now do note, until these cards show up on PWCC's archive, we do not know if these were paid for. So if anyone tried to pull some weird shit, backed out, didn't pay, all of that stuff, I will make a follow-up video when those archives are updated so we can actually see if these prices are, you know, correct. So again, we can be excited and, and watch some people spend crazy money, but be rational about it because some of these prices are very high. So first of all, we have our 2008 Retro Pack Cyber Harpy Lady. Now note that not all cards are listed here. I just followed the big ones, I want to say, but maybe I missed one. So we have our Retro Pack Cyber Harpy Lady, PSA 8, ending for $2,000. Now some people are like, what? Why? Why this card? Well, this is a chase card in that set. And so while this is high for an 8, you know, good luck finding a 10. I think the pop on the 10 is 1 and it's like a weak 10, so you know, it's a very rare card. Next up, we have Blue Eyes White Dragon, SDK first edition PSA 10 for $21,000. Now again, we'll see if this gets paid for, you know. As far as I was aware, before this auction, usually this card gets offers between 13 and 15k or so. That is the up to date market price at that point considering the auction before that considering the offers people are giving so 21 is a huge bump up now do note this card has not been for sale since like october there has been no auction this is the lowest pop vintage blue eyes out of you know the top three where it's lob dds sdk is this possible sure but could this also be full of shit yeah so we'll see when the archive history hits also note that this wasn't the strongest then like it had quite a bit of whitening even on the front so you know tread carefully next up we have a change of heart psa 10 first edition mrd at 2.8k sounds about fair like given that the 9 sold for 1k a few weeks ago i think this is perfectly reasonable but you know you always have people saying no that's bullshit blah 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 i personally don't own a 10 mine might get graded a 10 because i have one at psa i also have a 9 so judge that how you will but i think this price is not outrageous then we had a lob psa 9 first edition exodia for 3.4k okay 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 then we had a bgs 9 red eyes black dragon for 3.2 that's actually pretty low considering you had psa 9s actually selling for quite a bit higher a few weeks ago that's actually a trend you will see in this particular block a lot of cards hit all-time highs but all of the bgs cards just didn't like people seem to not give a damn about bgs and again we've talked about that on this channel before bgs is a huge name in this industry but in Yu-Gi-Oh, it seems like there's far few lovers of this particular company than for psa we already know psa is like the number one biggest one taking most of the market share but the fact that a bgs 9 went for so little compared to a psa 9 a few weeks ago and then also other bgs cards that we'll get to you know i mean it's not looking too hot for quite some bgs's in this particular block so personally i feel a lot of these were you know very undervalued and good on you if you want them. Uh, next, right here, look at that. A BGS 9.5 first edition mystical elf for $800. Honestly, if I wasn't asleep, I would have bit that easily. Like, that is theft. That is straight up theft. So while a lot of cards here, you know, people will probably talk shit on the SDK and the DDS and we'll see if they get paid for. But 800 for Mystical Elf is straight up theft. Even though I, I didn't check the subs, it's very possible that the BGS 9 was maybe a weaker 9, I would have to check. But yeah, I, I don't know. No matter what the subs say right there, 800, that's just not a lot at all. Next up, we had a BGS 9 Celtic Guardian once again for 500. That is nothing. Okay, we had the wavy uh, first edition 10 sell for, I want to say 4,000 the other day. And that was high for that card. Now, some people could say, oh, but it was wavy and it was faded. So that added the premium. Sure. But like, this is quite a difference. This is a big difference. I know for a fact that PSA 9 Celtic Guardian sold for more recently. So it's just, you know, these three cards, all three BGSs getting absolutely slaughtered on their price. Whilst all the PSA cards were hitting all time highs. So next up, we have a just a simple PSA 8 at 248. That's fine. It's low grade, whatever. I was following it because I 
don't have an American graded Celtic and I considered bidding, I would probably have paid this. I would definitely have paid this. Again, like <laughs> I was asleep. I straight up forgot. I had other shit to do, but I would absolutely have gone for this and this. Maybe this even, honestly. Next up, we have a LOB PSA 9 first edition for 15.8k. Uh, we have another PSA 9 for 17k and another PSA 9 for 15k. Now, this brings up a very uh, funny, interesting point. You know, usually a 10 is going to be about three times a nine. That is not a hard and fast rule. You know, there are certain outliers. There are certain things to consider 100%. But in general, that's about where you should consider prices when you're trying to, you know, guess, okay, how much would a 10 be? How much would a nine be? Where's the market going? That's just a really quick indicator, you know, quick and dirty. Compare it to a trailing PE ratio. It's not perfect, but it can get you there and give you some analysis. If people are saying that LOB PSA 10 first edition blue, Blue eyes is 85,000. How is the nine selling for 15, 17, and 15? Multiply this by three. Let me know how much it is. Let me know how close it is to 85,000. These prices, you know, are quite high. I think the last sales were usually around 10K, maybe slightly above 10K, but it's not, you know, out of the ordinary. Again, we'll see if these will be sold for, but given how much other cards have grown, this growth sounds about right. But again, if you multiply this by three, I think that would be the market value of a PSA 10 LOB Blue Eyes. Next up, we had the Trihorn Dragon. 2.5k for a PSA 9 is quite wild. I think the previous high was lower than this. I personally wouldn't have paid this. Again, Trihorn for the longest time, people didn't really care about this card. It is LOB, so that will automatically always inflate the price. It's a secret rare and so forth. Like, I get it. I would like to own this. But 2.5 is, you know, I saw some people talk shit on this price. Next up, we have a DDS PSA 10 Exodia for 2.7k. It's funny, like a few months ago, you could still pick this up for like 500, 600. If anything like has really gone up crazily, I think it's this Exodia and the GBI God cards. Then we had a DDS PSA 10 Dark Magician for 7k. And then we get to our DDS Blue Eyes PSA 10 25k. So once again, until shit shows up on the archive, we don't know if it's been paid for. This would be a major all-time high. It would also somewhat be in line with the growth of the SDK. If you recall, the last time we had an auction for a DDS, it ended at about 13k and the SDK ended at about 10k. So if you multiply that 13 times 2 is 26 and 10 times 2 is 20. So these ended at about double of what they previously sold for. So in relationship to each other, the growth makes sense. But in relationship to the rest of the market, maybe it doesn't. So again, we have to check the archives. But again, I found it pretty funny how this card did not move at 24k a day ago or two days ago and somehow the auction went to 25 and then I saw a bunch of people trying to sell at 25 on Instagram suddenly so it's like oh damn uh, better get this sold before the archive hits and maybe it doesn't get paid for so we'll see but if it gets paid for the all-time high I guess is 25k for a DDS. Next up we have a BPT collector stin red eyes for 2k so here's an interesting thing a lot of these prices were actually hit many days ago. And usually when you look at a natural growth of an auction, the big hit money, the big the big cash, you know, the big collectors and investors and so forth, they usually hold their bits until the last moment because they are aware, well, they, they don't want to give more attention to it. They don't want to get outbid by someone because again, if you put in your highest bid, but then you still give it five days, it's very easy for someone to just go, oh, I'll give $1 more, not really $1 at these amounts, but you know, I'll give $100 more and then you are suddenly forced to pay more. Whereas if you don't put in any bids and you just wait, till the last minute and you put in your bid, it is very possible that you will get a better price. Again, generally, rationally, you only want to put in as much as you're willing to pay. And if someone is willing to pay more, that's fine. So some people just put in their bid anyway, and that's fine too. But very often the big bucks come in late. However, what we saw with these was that from the very beginning, they hit some of these prices and then just stopped moving until the last second. Like this SDK has been sitting around 20K for a very, very long. Whereas with a usual auction, you know, this would be sitting at 10K maybe. And then the last hour it would go to 20. Uh, same for the LOBs, same for the DDS, same for the BPT. Like when this BPT red eyes hit 2K, some people were telling me that like that feels off because that means it will end at 4K or whatever. But now it didn't, you know. This BPT Red Eyes went to 2K many days ago and then just didn't move after that. And that is really weird to me. Like either 
very early on, people just put in their bits and were like, this is fine. Or they were all pushed to like ridiculous proportions to a point where a lot of collectors just weren't willing to spend and keep up. And like me personally, I forgot about the auctions and didn't put in bids on some cards I would have paid for. Like these, I would have easily paid more because I was like, oh, there's a lot of shady shit going on. So I'm not even going to watch. I'm not, not even going to follow. So that is like a pretty big danger when you are playing in these markets where if stuff gets pushed too hard too quickly, a lot of your organic interest will just say peace out. So these were the auctions that I personally uh, followed. Were there any that you were flabbergasted by? Uh, maybe maybe some PSA 9s or, or, or some odd stuff. I know for a fact there were a few weird ones out there as well, but I didn't really follow them specifically. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.